Who is Frank Miller, and what makes him such a big deal? His many works have redefined classic characters and revitalized the comics industry. Frank Miller grew up in Vermont, pouring himself into comics, kung fu movies, and crime fiction as a youth. Upon moving to New York City in 1977, Miller worked as a carpenter to pay rent. He frequently hung out in the lobbies of DC and Marvel, pestering editors and artists for advice on his work. He came across famous artist Neil Adams, who gave Miller lessons on drawing comic book art. Adams helped Miller get his first work on the comic book series of The Twilight Zone, which led to a few other stints as a cover artist at Marvel. This led to penciling jobs on Spider-Man in the late 70s, and Miller pitched some ideas to revamp the character Daredevil, a very unpopular character with low sales at the time. Frank Miller was only 22 years old when he debuted on Daredevil issue 158 in 1979. Miller's work on Daredevil received high critical acclaim and helped the failing title sell big numbers on the comic book stands during his run in the 1980s. He eventually would take over writing duties as well, and created the beloved character, the sexy assassin Elektra. Frank Miller's shadowy crime fighters in Daredevil influenced one of the biggest pop culture phenomenons of all time, the Ninja Turtles. For example, the Sensei Splinter is a parody of Stick, Daredevil's mentor. The Foot Clan is a parody of The Hand, the evil ninja clan that Daredevil fights. Raphael carries a pair of psi weapons, like Elektra. And in the first issue, the origin story of the Turtles mirrors the same origin story of Daredevil. Daredevil went on to become a movie in 2003 starring Ben Affleck, with a spin-off about Elektra starring Jennifer Garner in 2005. Those movies were panned by critics and fans, but Daredevil Daredevil will be getting a reboot for an upcoming Netflix original TV series with Marvel Studios starring Charlie Cox in 2015. In 1983, Frank Miller wrote and drew Ronin, a graphic novel about a Ronin samurai who is reincarnated in a futuristic New York. Ronin was a breakthrough for comics. It was printed on high-quality heavy stock paper and was controlled by a single creator, uninhibited by corporate restraints. This was very rare in American comics at the time. Ronin's popularity went on to inspire the Cartoon Network show Samurai Jack, and the Sci-Fi Channel is developing a Ronin miniseries for TV for 2015. In 1986, the comics industry exploded with Frank Miller's Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Inspired by a midlife crisis and Dirty Harry movies, Frank Miller wrote an epic tale of an aged Batman returning to fight the evils of a corrupt Gotham. This book shoved away the campiness of Batman. The book went on to sell over a million copies. After that, Miller moved to Los Angeles to work in the film business. Miller worked on the screenplay for Robocop 2 and found the experience frustrating because he did not have as much creative control as he wanted. Quickly, he decided to quit Hollywood. In the 90s, Miller returned to comics, working for Dark Horse, publishing graphic novels like Sin City, Hard Boiled, and Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot, which later became a Saturday morning cartoon show. Before being adapted into a movie, Sin City was very influential on filmmakers, such as Darren Aronofsky. Darren Aronofsky said in an interview with IndieWire that his breakthrough film Pi was inspired visually by the Sin City comics. As Hollywood reached the new millennium, Frank Miller's work would see mainstream success like never before. The Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy took many ideas from Frank Miller's Batman Year One and The Dark Knight Returns. For example, replacing the sleek Batmobile with the military-grade tumbler, Batman escaping police with a bat homing device, The Dark Knight Rises involves an older Batman with a cane who's been retired from crime fighting, Bruce Wayne modifies his old limbs with a mechanical exoskeleton. In 2005, as comic book movies became increasingly important to Hollywood, Miller was brought on to co-direct the movie Sin City with Robert Rodriguez. The 2014 sequel, A Dame to Kill For, was co-directed again by Frank Miller and Robert Rodriguez. His graphic novel 300 was adapted by Zack Snyder for Warner Brothers, and met huge box office success, grossing half a billion dollars worldwide. 300's success led to a sequel, 300 Rise of an Empire, in 2014, and earned over $300 million in the box office. In 2008, Frank Miller wrote and directed The Spirit, an adaptation of Will Eisner's 1940s newspaper comic, which fell flat to critics and audiences who felt it was too much of a Sin City ripoff and not faithful enough to the original material. But in 2013 came Hugh Jackman's The Wolverine, directed by James Mangold and largely influenced by the work of Frank Miller and Chris Claremont. 1982 miniseries Wolverine. The story is set in Japan, focusing, as usual, on Frank Miller's love for ninjas, martial arts, and samurai culture. Also in 2013, Zack Snyder announced at the San Diego Comic-Con that Batman vs. Superman will be inspired by Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, and quoted excerpts from the book at the presentation. After the announcement, sales for the book surged 161%, breaking records for DC Comics. Frank Miller is a big deal because his works have influenced many large properties in pop culture, film, television, and literature. His ideas ideas and movies have grossed huge numbers in the box office, and his stories have impacted audiences all around the world. What's your favorite Frank Miller comic? What's your favorite Frank Miller movie? What other comic book visionaries would you like us to make videos about? Let us know in the comments below.